Hello, everybody. I took Ibogaine again uh, about a month ago. The second time was intense. The first time was intense, but I think it's always going to be intense when you take that stuff. The first time had some things about it, but one thing that took place is since I'm having so many experiences with the intervention, and I'm having so many experiences with this off-world presence. Um, I, th I think about it a lot, and since I'm having actual experiences, that's not just me thinking about what they might be like or all that kind of thing. It's more to, to actually have an experiential element within my life makes my thoughts about it more true to life. It's about what life is actually like out there, not how I imagine it to be. It's not about fantasy and imagination, okay? It's about, and it's not even about, like, um, theorizing. You read enough new message revelations, you know, like uh, Life in the Universe. That's a great book. Preparing for the Greater Community. So many other ones. Taking steps to knowledge itself. On top of the fact that I am, I have been bombarded quite a bit. So there's experiential, but there's also a, a, a knowledge base coming through with the new message. And taking Ibogaine, it engages your mind in a very specific way that opens up how can I put this? It, it engages you with the part of your mind that can have visions, but these visions are being informed. They can be informed by a deeper thing. It's very experiential. Separation, the nature of separation. That, that's a big thing. Um, when I was in the first experience, I was being taken through cycles of what these beings are like and their situation. And getting, I thought I was feeling them powerfully before, and I was, but you know, actually taking Ibogaine, it's like really feeling them and really seeing them and really almost seeing the, the, the universe through their eyes, so to speak. It's very cold. It's very calculating, but it's also based on necessity. The, the wider universe is just like this world. There's competition. There's evolution, there's tension, things can happen to where beings are forced into situations to do things to, just to survive, and even though they might be very, very technologically advanced, um, that doesn't mean they're spiritually advanced. It just means they're trying to take advantage of a situation of an unaware emerging race such as ours, and it's just so clear, it's, it's so clear I was seeing this, and I was seeing their mentality in terms of uh, trying to win over humanity, trying to gain our allegiance, what that might look like. Almost like a used car salesman who's, got, who's really trying to make it look good, even though there's some things really wrong with what they're doing. Um, you got to look at it like that. I mean... Some of their methods might be sophisticated, but the fact that they don't have a spiritual foundation within them, the fact that they're being manipulative and deceptive, it means that they're totally lost on the deeper nature of reality. And you can feel it. You can feel the superficial nature of what they're doing and they're, they're, the superficial nature of their existence, how thin it is. Even though they have very, very advanced technology, it doesn't change the fact that they're they're paper thin. 
in a sense. It's, it's There's no depth with what they're doing. They, they don't have any depth within them. Everything they're doing is for prosaic reasons. Very, very prosaic. Even though they can make it seem like they're spiritual. Just by capitalizing on human superstition, human expectation. They've been studying that. They, and the, the New Message and the Allies of Humanity briefing say they do this with every world. They find out what the superstitions are, what their religious beliefs might be, and they, they tweak them. They start even things that are going on politically with governments. They'll, they'll be, they're working all these different angles to, to try and lead a world into their hands. The second time I took Ibogaine, there was, there was that theme as well. But, of course, there's a lot of things that go on, but this theme really started to build. And it wasn't just about how thin the intervention is. It's about how thin separation is. Separation itself. Physical reality. Throughout the entire universe, which is vast beyond comprehension. It is everywhere. Thin. It doesn't have depth. It's a place for you to hide from God. That's what separation is. The new message says that separation, it, it can seem like there's a contradiction built into it because you came here to do two things. You came here to hide from God and you also came here to work for God. How does that work? You had a desire for separation. But you also have a desire for union and to get back to God. And separation is a place for the separated to go through this journey of reclaiming knowledge within them to get back to God. To get back to union. To get back to that which is unchanging. Undying. Um, it never... It never... It's never divided against itself. It never enters separation. But the, the physical universe itself, it, it just has its own thing about it. God is not here presiding over every element of existence. It's all just running itself. That's why tragedies can happen. So many things in, in this universe that can just seem horrific. Races that are tinkering with genetics and creating slave races and trying to it, but it's not even a perfected science. If you read uh, that Life in the Universe book from the New Message, it's fascinating, you know, how many races involve themselves in that. And it talks about how tempting it is. Once a race gets very technologically advanced, it's very tempting for them to go down that route, if, especially if they don't have a spiritual foundation. Because it's all just about control, security, but if you go down that road too far, you get trapped by it. You become like a prisoner, by, a prisoner within your own creations. And that's dangerous. It's not, it's not a good place to be. And I can feel that with these other races and these other nations that actually exist in our region of space. They're actually out there. It's not like there's a, a single government that rules all of them. It's way too complex for that. It's way too vast for anything like that. There might be empires, but compared to the greater community itself, no matter how large an empire is, it's tiny compared to the, the vastness of intelligent life out there. There are certain agreements within certain regions of space that different races, you know, uh, uh, abide by. Like kind of rules, even though they're not all part of the exact same government. The The new message says there are trade unions, there are commercial oper operations, there are collectives, there are very oppressive nations that work within these cooperatives. 
free nations that are truly free do not enter into these things because they will lose their freedom as a result. Truly free nations do not enter into these agreements, these unions, these trading cooperatives, because they're, all, they're so dependent on each other that once you get into it, you can't get out. And these kinds of organizations are the ones that are here right now, at least the ones that know of us. Not all of them know of us, but a few do. And those are the ones that are here trying to get humanity in a situation to where we would have to basically concede and get into these agreements concerning the resources of this world and the direction of this world. Separation itself is very thin. It doesn't matter where you look. It might seem amazing to your senses. It might seem amazing to your intellect, like if you could actually see another world with another race, how they might look very different. But even if they, their cultures were very different and their, their minds were very different, you would still see some of the same things. Resource acquisition, security. Even th th those two things are like the same, whether you're looking at a free nation that has a spirituality or you're looking at very unfree nations that are very secular and scientific and, and like brutal. They're both doing the same things in terms of resource acquisition and security, needing security. It's just they're both going about it in totally different ways. One's very oppressive and miserable. The other is free and, and has a deeper spiritual intelligence guiding their evolutionary process. You can tell the ones that don't have that deeper intelligence, that, that deeper spiritual intelligence activated, their evolutionary process becomes compromised. They become enslaved by their own technology. They become enslaved by their own social orders. And I, I can feel it from them because I've been close to them because they're here and they... <sighs> Being able to feel that and be close to it, it's really something. And the fact that, like, when I took Ibogaine, these themes actually came up. And, whoa, boy. Like, I went deep into, like, the reality of it. Just the reality of it. The objectivity of it. It's not about imagination. It's being able to see it and experience it in a very objective kind of way. Just, like, it tears away the... <clears throat> sort of like the veils of fantasy and expectation you might have about it. It loses all of its oohs and ahs and ooh, wow, that, ooh, wow. You're, you're no longer thinking about it in those terms. It's, it's more a very stark experience. Very stark. Very, you're just like, you're, you're, you're sober in a way. You're, you're looking at it in a very sober way, a very dry way, because you don't have a choice. You can't overlay an expectation on top of this very brutal reality. It's not paradise everywhere out there. Even as bad as things have been here in this world, it gets worse out there. Because worlds have gone through the same kinds of things we're going through. And some of them have went very hard in the unfree direction. You know how there's, you know, freedom. There's a fight for freedom in this world. Sometimes it wins. Sometimes it seems like there's this other thing. But the same kinds of struggles happen out there. And sometimes worlds win. Sometimes worlds lose big time, big time. <clears throat> so you could think about it in terms of like, think of a whole world that's like North Korea, except times 100. And on top of that, they have super advanced technology and they're doing everything they can to get resources. They suppress f 
freedom of expression. They suppress art. They suppress any kind of spirituality. Everything is just about the race and resource acquisition. The new message says that worlds like this and races like this, it's all about just espionage, spying, trying to get into certain worlds, trying trying to convince naive races like our own, trying to convince them that uh, entering in, into their trading collectives would, would be a good idea so that they can have access to this world because we're becoming so predominant in this world that we would be able to shut off the valve to them because of the fact that we're gaining technological advancement, a lot of it, and we're gaining the ability to enter into this greater community. <clears throat> the fact that we're being able to do that, we need to learn how to insulate ourselves from it. Can't just go flying around, visiting any old planets we want, and like, ooh, ah, it's not like that. <clears throat> Things are done very carefully out there. Things are very guarded. There are rules. And these these um, scavenger races that are taking advantage of a situation, they don't want us to become insulated. They don't want us to become insulated. They want us to remain open to their influence because they themselves are in very difficult situations, very complex situations concerning resources. The new message says that entire worlds have been devastated by resource depletion. And they're, they're, they're forced into these situations. They are literally forced into these collectives because they don't have a choice. And it's a complex situation. It's very brutal. It's, it's cruel. There's things like, and I feel it. I've, I've been able to really feel it and see it. And you're just, it's not a pleasant thing. Think of like just a desert of, of like the expression of intelligent life and separation. Just imagine that at its absolute lowest expression possible. Like a desert, a real desert. No expressions of art, no expressions of creativity, no expressions of culture, no expressions of spirituality. It's just unknown to them. Totally unknown. Being in this situation, kind of situation, for thousands of years, while at the same time you have advanced technology. But this technology is no longer a freedom, it's enslavement. And you've literally gorged your own, you've destroyed your own world from gorging on its resources to advance this technology then you find out well whoops whoops but you still need this technology because it's the only thing you have now it's not anything to look toward or it's not anything to look for it's not the, the savior it's not the thing that's going to save humanity more technology it's the path of enslavement technology can be great even free nations can develop their technology, but like the new message says, you have to be very careful with it because it can enslave you. And you become like these other races that are just, they're biological, yes. They're, they're biological, but they're also just robotic. They're biological robots. I'm not saying they're cyborgs, like they're literal cyborgs, but they, they might have some kinds of interface with technology that they have, but yes, they do have beating hearts. Yes, they do have electricity running through their brains. Some of them may be warm-blooded. Some of them may be cold-blooded, depending on what kind of life form they are. But it doesn't change the fact that <laughs> the fact that the spiritual intelligence within them has been just shut off very, very cold, calculating, brutal existence. They only, they see humanity itself as a resource. They're not even interested in us. They see us as just a resource. Can you imagine, like, how, how beings like that would see you? 
Try, try to think of what we must look like through their eyes. Just a resource. Even we have things they want. We have things they would like access to. They're not interested in our culture. They're not interested in our philosophy, our spirituality, our art. They're not like, ooh, they're so fascinating. The new message and the, the allies of humanity say that you would think that. And even other races that have gone through this process of transition into the greater community, they, they always think that. They think they're so special. They're so self-centered. They think any race that would come in must be really interested in them and want to help them and save them and give them a higher culture and all this shit. No higher race. No, no race that is truly higher in terms of like culture, ethics, spirituality. No, no high caliber culture like that would just be coming into a world and doing what these beings are doing. Manipulating things just intervening and, 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 and it's just the furthest thing from ethical. It gives you an idea of their mentality, their actual mentality. 